Hello, I'm Edscar and I'm tired and recently I've been painting some cowboys last week. Last week we painted up the sheriff here. Let's get a bit of a closer view. There we go. And since then I have painted another one. I have painted my uh, evil twin of Annie Oakley. Hello, Grandpa Werewolf. Yes, the stream has started. I'm just doing the intro. <laughs> and thank you, Foxy Mitz, for checking the sound. Um, yeah, so over the week I've been painting this. I've really been struggling to do this in like five or ten minutes at a time. Uh, and it really has taken me the whole week to get done. I still kind of want to put a few bits of uh, some extra highlights in just to smooth it out. I mean, the same is true of, of this one just to uh, clean up a few of the rough bits. But we have more to go. And so I should probably paint one of these today. We have the gunslinger and the bruiser. Shotgun. Grandpa Werewolf had me on mute. That's nice. <laughs> and we have this one uh, when when we built them um, the video for this hasn't come out but uh, Paul and myself built these for a Back to the Brush mini episode and when I built this one with the rolled up sleeves we both kind of thought that he looks younger than the others for no real reason because the heads are the same the statue is the same it's just kind of the rolled up sleeves I guess he doesn't have a beard, but it's not the only one. Some of the others don't. Gunslinger. Paint the gunslinger. So Foximitz is voting for the gunslinger. Uh, with a mismatched pair of pistols. We've got uh, what seems to be a cult peacemaker on this side, probably. And then this is definitely a top break, probably a show field. Schofield and a bandana covering pretty much all of his face there's things we could do with this so it doesn't really matter what the order is but uh, if chat is demanding the gunslinger we can paint the gunslinger so what colors shall we have I want to keep them relatively bright. Kind of even with this one with the uh, the browns is relatively bright in uh, in its coloring, particularly with the tan. And I've been struggling with the tan, so I kind of want to avoid using the tan again. <laughs> Nicholas says speed paint 30 minutes each. Well, that would get them done by the end of the stream. Um but I think I want to pet spend a little more attention painting these than uh, speed painting. Uh, yeah. So where shall I start? Uh, we can give him blue jeans. We can give him some kind of colored. Uh, I think that's a waistcoat in there. In fact, not only is it a waistcoat, but there is. We can just see it here. The chain of a pocket watch, which is a nice little detail. <laughs> life ain't easy. If life was easy, it would be, well, it wouldn't be as bad as it is now. Uh, we can paint um, some parts of it quite dark. I don't mind bits of it being dark, as long as it's on the whole quite bright. So what I might do is paint the jacket as an off black, kind of a maybe a greeny off black, because that then leaves me the waistcoat that I can paint and the trousers that I can paint. Blue jeans, red waistcoat, brown coat. Yeah, but a very dark brown for the for the coat is what I'm thinking. Let's start there. 
Let's start with a wet palette and throw on some some black and some brown and see if we can get just the right color that we're after. Wow, this uh, this black is quite watery. Yeah, but that's okay, it's a step in the right direction to being properly thinned. See, that's kind of what I was thinking. This kind of, yeah, brownie black, really. Let's see how it goes on the model. Yeah, that is just what I was thinking for this. Very, very dark brown. But that does give me plenty of, uh, of room to highlight just up into the dark brown. And so that original dark brown would be the, maybe not the highlight color, but like on the way to the highlight color. <clears throat> You might notice along the way that this shoulder, uh, this one here, is a little bit um, kind of bulged out and uh, a little bit lumpy as well, actually, I think, because I'm kind of looking up close to it. That's because this is one of the models that I converted the arm to be pointing in a different direction. Usually it would be pointing out kind of this kind of way and I've cut it to be pointing straight forwards and that made a gap and I just filled the gap with a lump of sprue glued it in carved it back down it's not not quite perfect it's not as bad as uh, as I thought it would be it would be better if I'd have gone for a uh, mill apart to do some proper gap filling but That's not what I did. We should get the inside of the jacket while I'm here because that's gonna create a mess and I may as well make the mess now because I can clean it up more easily whereas if I make the mess after having painted the other bits it's just gonna be more annoying Looks like I've uh, cut the wrist on the other arm as well, because there's some uh, squeeze out of poly cement just around the the end of the sleeve. I can't really help myself when it comes to, to plastic kits or any model kit, or even even metal ones. Kind of, I hold them up and so yeah, okay, this is how you you wanted the model to be. That's that's nice and all. Um, I considered that and I've decided to cut it up and, and uh, position every part slightly differently.
Yeah, there's something about the uh, the mindset of a of a crafter like us. Wh whatever the craft is, there's a there's a nice starting point that uh, the kit is designed to be. Whether it's a, a knitting pattern or a or a cross stitch or a Meccano. I mean, Meccano and Lego, I guess, are, are designed for going off in different directions. But any chance I'll be painting a particular Cadian bust on stream? I haven't even printed that. Um, For the few of you in the audience, I will let slip at least a little bit that there is a special uh, design by D Divic Designs that's been floating around and I've had access to it. Pretty cool uh, bust of Acadian and I haven't got around to, uh, to, to printing that. I think um, at the moment my, my printer screen is cracked. And so I'm basically using half of the volume, or half of the surface area of the screen. And so at the moment I would be able to print it at less than half of the full volume that the uh, that I would be able to if I replace the screen. Um, what, what's my screen dimensions? It's... 50 something by 70 something so I've got 50 by like the like 50 by 40 is probably what I've got access to currently so for printing parts like um, a certain other Devic designs um, parts certain other Vic Designs parts that I've been uh, printing out and I've glued a, a comms pack to that one. I do like the idea of getting a new printer but uh, unfortunately being out of work at the moment kind of puts an end to that discussion fairly quickly. I've, uh, I've actually got an application out with um, a uh, like an engineering parts supplier so they have stock of um, anything from a ladder to a lathe like all sorts of stuff and they rent out that equipment and they're looking for someone uh, to do just maintenance and cleaning so I've applied for that which definitely seems like my kind of thing plus I get to muck around with a lathe Hopefully, probably not straight away. I'll probably be cleaning ladders for the first six months, but that's fine too. <clears throat> Job's a job. Um, but yeah, looking at the the new run of like eight Ks, eight K printers, it's got to the point now where. Like obviously, you need time to, to to dial in the settings and get um, get the print to come out just right. But off of an 8K, the current era of 8K printers, I've seen people painting them, and paints going on as smoothly as it would on a plastic or a cast resin model. And that is the one thing I was missing from mine. Um, 2K printers kind of improve things, but not by enough. 4K and 6K, better and better still, and then it's kind of the, the 8K is where it crosses the line and it's actually, it seems to me at least, as smooth as uh, cast parts. Which is an impressive step for the technology actually, given uh, how the, uh, the process works.
there are a number of things on my kind of when I get work, this is going, my first paycheck is going on this list. Um, and it's almost certainly a list that's longer than my first paycheck. <laughs> Thank you very much, Grandpa Werewolf. Ah. Yeah, good. Bookkeeping's good, and, uh, I don't know much about Uber, but um, I used to know someone who was getting into it kind of when it first started, and they were pretty hyped about it. I think I need to go much lighter with this. So, just looking back to the model, because that's why we're all here, the, uh, the jacket here, I mixed the brown with the black to get this darkest color, and then I'm essentially highlighting up into a dark brown and I think I'm I, I need to go around it with the brown again uh, but then I need to go a bit brighter I think because my my shadow color and my and, and the brown are kind of too close And yeah, uh, congrats and good luck to uh, uh, to Grandpa Whale for that. I think I said that, did I? I can't remember if I said it, but I have definitely said it now. I'm tempted to try and dr draw on a pocket here. Because that's a big open space and I can do some freehand, just the, the line of stitching. I think I'll leave that. Oh, actually, we've, we've got a, a pocket watch inside, so there, there's, there's detail going on. I really do like this set. Given the um, the price, I'm kind of impressed at the uh, at the quality of the parts. And there is plenty of detail on them. Let me grab some black and just go in these folds. There we go, that's what I wanted. Ochre. Hmm. Oh, I was thinking about uh, about making this more of a green model, wasn't I, at the start? Well. I haven't I haven't put any green in the uh, the brown, so maybe I'll do that on on the next model. But the uh, the ochre, which I actually do have to hand, because I was expecting to use that. Um, it's a nice touch of just a slight touch of red in ochre. Ochre's uh, an orangey brown. So, yeah, that would work. Bottom half of the skull on the bandana. Oh, good grief. Uh, if it were flat, I'd give it a go. But those folds... Those folds make that very difficult because not only do I have to to kind of paint in the pattern, I have to paint in the distortion of the pattern as it goes over the folds, and I think that honestly is beyond me probably. Uh, actually, I did something somewhat similar, or I attempted something similar on the other model, which I will grab for you. Yeah. 
So if you see what effectively is just a bunch of white spots on that bandana, my goal when I first started was to paint a flower, like a pink flower on there. And so I I painted like a, a big pink uh, area over most of this side of the bandana and I dotted in and panel lined, panel lined, uh, freehand lined sort of the shape of a rose and then painted black over the top for everything else. And because of the folds, I wasn't really able to uh, to get the, the the pattern to look how I wanted, and so it ended up just being a few spots. So it's probably the same story here. I'd like to. That would be cool. It might be worth a try. Like, even if I fail, there's no reason to to not give it a go. Um, and can, I can always paint over it. If we're going ochre, and I paint the skull in black and white. The ochre will cover the white easily and the black will just be dirt. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Remind me when we get to that and, and I'll give it a go. For now, let's get just a slight bit of ochre highlights on the jackets. And not get paint all over the side of this pot. Thank you, Ravel, for your wonderful pot design. So I do want to keep this relatively dark, at least at first, because I'm not sure just how bright I want to go with this. See about that. Oh, well, that's a bit more. Uh... Maybe a bit too much there where I slipped and splashed, splotched it, but uh, otherwise that's kind of the effect I was going for. So let's continue. Uh, I'm doing a not not cross hatching, but just striping in lines across where I want the highlight to be, and that does. A bit of a job of, of doing the highlight because it's a brighter paint over where the highlight is but it's also doing a little bit in the way of adding some texture to say ah oh yes this this is made of a a woven material that has uh, lines of fabric running in in these directions not a technique that I use a lot, and it's obviously not one I'm particularly familiar with. It's a little bit harsh on this one. But you don't get good at something by not doing it, so. Give it, give it some practice and hopefully you improve right, let's get the top of the arms go for it yeah yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> we will we will give that a go when we get to it. We've got plenty of time. I say that we're half an hour in, and I'm, I, I've only done the jacket, so. As we say in the prairies, go for it. Go for it. I need to work on, uh, on, a, on a kind of Western accent with all the yeehaws and the howdy pardon, pardoners and so on. Right, I want to fix up where I slipped because that is that is too much of a a splotch. Let's see if I can find some of the previous highlight. What I might be able to do is just stripe in over the top of it. Kind of rather than destroying that splotch, I can just reduce it a little bit. well actually might just quickly do the same here because that where I overlapped kind of is a little strong cool that worked that worked surprisingly well now, back to my highlight with a little bit of that uh, ochre in. Let's get, I'm going to move some lighting. I'm glowing on the face cam view, but I'll, I'll move that back in a moment. Because we have a lapel at the front. Well, I should have very, at the very least. Edge that out. Kind of working under his hat so you can't quite see, but I can't get an angle on it any other way. going around the collar which I appear to have missed a bit of earlier well got it now there we go that is that can go back I don't need to glow quite so brightly yep yeah, I'm happy with that it's, uh, it's a little harsh in some places, but that's all right. Let's go. Let's have a go at this uh, at this skull pattern that the chat is forcing me to go for. And you know what? Let's base coat the skin as well with the ochre because that works well.
and I've thinned it down too much. Grab some more paint, there we go, it's a little better. You'll notice the silver on the pistols and some black on the base were already there when I started. There's a very good reason for that. It's because I replaced the paper on my wet palette and that was the paint that was left. Great big glob of silver, not so much black but it's a little. And so thought I'd use it up and I went through and painted black on the base for the uh, cracker paint that's going on later and picked out all of the gun barrels. So what I shall do quickly for a second is some reference research. Find me a skull bandana. That's an extremely intricate designs. What I might actually do is just look for a line art skull. Because that's going to be a far simpler. Okay. So there's a few different ways I could approach this. One of which is to put a whole bunch of white paint down fill in kind of messily just white and then line in the black which is probably the best way to approach this because then I can clean up the edge just by going over it with the ochre or I could try and fill in the line up with the black first and then use the white to clean it up afterwards I think the first option is probably the most likely to succeed. that a minute to uh, to dry and then and come back to it so uh, did we say green for the waistcoat I think we said green and given that I've got the ochre out uh, ochre's red Give 
give that a shake. Probably pull this into the ochre as well, just to give it more of an earthy green rather than the more military green than it starts out as. That's pretty good. Just going to bring in a little more ochre so that we can start getting a highlight on it. Even though the ochre has uh, red, it's uh, orange as well. It, well, it's, it's orange, so it's got red and uh, red and yellow. And the yellow is an excellent highlight color for uh, for green generally. And the, the red isn't actually working against it too badly. some almost panel lining of the pockets. Probably under some of the folds on this side as well. Hello 40k guy, thank you very much. You got here just at the right time because we're about to experiment with a very difficult bit of uh, freehand. Oh, you have you have betrayed betrayed the cowboy way and gone with some Cultists of the Abyss. Uh, is that the Blackstone Fortress one, or is that the the new one? That I might be wrong on. <clears throat> Right then, difficult freehand work. On our little bandana here, I'm going to have a go at painting at least the teeth. Yeah, they are the Blackstone Fortress ones. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool set. I've got the um, the heroes of the Blackstone Fortress set, the the, the main set which I still haven't painted. I should paint some of those at some point. Um, I split them with uh, with Paul, my uh, co-host on Back to the Brush podcast. Um, we split them about a, actually more than a year ago. And I haven't painted any of them. <laughs> 190 something models that I painted last year and not one of them was Blackstone Fortress model. Right, skull. I'm not trying to avoid it, honest. Try 
trying to make sure I've got the dilution absolutely right. And then I've got a nice sharp point. into the fold running along a fold or maybe running over the top of a fold is fairly easy but when you've got one that a line that needs to go down into a fold and come back up the other side that is the difficult part I mean it's not it's not a disaster it, yeah, I've kind of managed it there. Let's the uh, recess for the nasal cavity next. So we're looking at kind of a that kind of shape. And again, we're. Uh, Kind of dealing with a fold. And then kind of the eye sockets are roughly where the top of the bandana is, just given how I've position this so if I kind of give just a hint of a black kind of black circle on each side and then line around it nope that's that didn't work too much water in there I'm gonna to have to go back for more more paint Vermintide 2 just finished downloading Vermintide 2. I think I might have Vermintide 1 uh, the only 40k computer games I've got or the only Warhammer computer games I've got are uh, I got in a pack a long time ago um, I got the Dawn of Wars which were a bit, well, I, I shouldn't call them rubbish, but it's just that they're not my style of of game. I'm not really a real time real time strategy player. Gargunkle, Gargunkle Nerf, if I can pronounce it properly. Hello, how are you doing? I am alive. Uh, I did play Space Marine recently because there was all that hype and I hadn't played it and I just happened to own it so I went back and gave it a go and it was a bit dull if I'm honest, kind of a fairly boring story and kind of pretty simple gameplay. The one I really liked and I know that this is going to come as a shock to everyone because everybody hates this game. Um, one of my favorite f kind of games, workshop games that I've played is Fire Warrior. Um, it's not a good game by any means, but it's fun to play. <laughs> that, I, I did paint a jaw below the skull here. So I've got the main part of the skull with the teeth. I did paint kind of a jaw here. That came out awfully, so what I might do is just erase that. Games for free on a White Dwarf magazine. <laughs> Good. Good fun. Uh, there was the... Uh... The Necromunda game, 
recently, the turn-based one. Underhive, was it? <clears throat> was it Underhive Wars that was turn-based, or was that the? Because there was a like a first-person one that came out shortly after. And I all, almost certainly would have preferred the the other game, but what I what I actually got was the the turn-based one. I don't try to paint finer facial details anymore. They are the most difficult part of a model to paint. And given that this model has most of his face covered by a bandana, I thought I'd be getting away with it, but certain someone in the chat demanded that I paint an extremely difficult freehand over the top, which Almost, almost looks like a skull. Close enough. Huh. Cool. So what I should probably do, rather than highlighting, because I want the rest of the bandana to be highlighted, or shadowed, and what I'm going to do is shadow it. Um, but if I uh, if I highlight it up into white, then the, the skull detail will disappear. So I'm going to shadow it instead by adding in some of our older brown, which is still here on the wet palette. And if I can very carefully line that into the folds that should probably do most of the job might just need a bit of a clean up afterwards which is fine yeah that does outline the uh, the skull pattern fairly well actually Yes, Foxy Mitz is the certain someone causing me all this problem, causing me all this trouble, making life hard. Uphill both way. Wait, what? surprisingly well. I mean, it looks a little better in real life than it does on the camera here, because on the camera that's just a, a blur. If I get it really close and focus on it. There's definitely teeth, there's definitely a nose. Um, it doesn't really follow the folds of the, uh, the bandana perfectly and it's quite messy. But given that I thought it wasn't possible in the first place, or at least not at my skill level, um, we can call that mostly a success. Um, so what's left? We've got the skin, the hat, and the trousers as well. Yes, uh, for anyone who watches Back to the Brush podcast, um, we have a section of corrections and errors uh, that is almost completely populated by Foxy Mitts. Uh, just saying how wrong I am all the time. And how 
all of my information is lies. Right, I'm just mixing up my famous blues. And we'll get those down for this coat on the jeans. She does, in fact, take great enjoyment in pointing out all of my mistakes. I think the biggest mistake was making that a, uh, a section of the podcast. That was probably the biggest mistake. <laughs> Speaking of the podcast, for anyone around who listens to that, um, the lost episode that would have been November's uh, has been found, and we'll get we'll get that transferred to my computer so I can edit it at some point. In the meantime, we have a. Well, we intended it to be a short episode, but it ended up being about the about the normal length. Um, but we have an interim episode for January that has been recorded and is currently being edited. If I can get that out by Wednesday of this week, um, that will be a success, I think. Um, or it might come out on the uh, on the weekend. And we go into a little bit of detail about exactly what the problem has been. Short version, cat peed on a computer, very expensive. Uh, just just a, another reason to maybe not have a cat. Or to not have seven cats. Or ha How many cats has Paul got? Is it seven? Is it six? That is a mold line that I did not clean up, but it's on the inside of his leg, so you'll never know. How's that for overall color? I think that's good for overall color. Right, let's bring back some of this nearly black, um, but it is actually ultramarines blue. But if I get just a spot of that to mix in, to darken my mix for shadow color. Six now, yeah. This is one of the advantages of this painting handle and having a massive amount of control over how I hold the model is that I can turn it upside down. The problem with, with doing that is that you guys can't see any of what I'm doing when I do that, which is why I generally refrain, but when it comes to painting in shadows, it is by far the easier way. Am I drifting? No, I'm okay. I 
tend to drift out of frame a lot at the beginning of recording or the beginning of a live stream. But I eventually settle and stay still and that's that's where it becomes a problem because when I do kind of move slightly I, I don't notice to check. I should have painted before the waistcoat, but oh well. It's just a little recess in between the waistcoat and the belt. So it's actually not the only model that has something like that. It's uh, a staple of this set. Could have had to do the same thing here, painting that blue line of the top of the trousers in. Have the others got it? Yeah, I have to do it on that one. Yeah, not so much on that one because he's got his arms in the way. But yeah, on this one as well. Kind of, you got the the ammo belt and then, or the gun belt, and then just below that, or just above that, sorry, is a little bit of the trousers still. Right. Now that we've got that, let's go for some of my beautiful lighter blue. Lovely colour that is. Look, lovely colour. Mix this in. And we'll do some highlighting. Ooh, long post. Let me uh, just finish this. I'll clean the brush so it doesn't dry out while I read it. Just going to back to the brush. First and last episode. Too much fun. You and Paul have an awesome British comedy duo. Even though sometimes Paul dropping models, the chuckles may be unintended. That's absolutely fine. Um, as long as it, as long as a, it's an enjoyable thing to listen to while you're painting, that's uh, kind of the point. Um, it is a bit of a stereotype that we're uh, uh, kind of doing a podcast in. We started in uh, 2019, so kind of the same time everyone else started podcasts. I was like, well, we're all stuck at home, we've got to do something. And it's either kind of coming up with new ways to annoy the neighbours, or we can do a podcast. We chose podcast. Something I've noticed about uh, kind of layering highlights and shadows, kind of this here, so this whole 
darker line here is what some is part of what I painted in when I was shading. And the edge isn't particularly neat. Uh, it's not particularly smooth. But because it's a darker colour, it somehow, to my eyes at least, seems much more forgiving than um, than if I did a highlight with that kind of very harsh edge. And I haven't done enough experimentation to know whether it's just a psychological thing with me or whether other people see it as well. But kind of painting in the shadows can be much more forgiving than painting in the highlights. But there we go. There are a pair of blue jeans painted. I've got a lot of this model done now. Let's get the boots out of the way. Should we go black boots? Because we've got the dark brown for the jacket. And the the base is going to be a um, uh, like a fairly light brown. Do I have any? I don't think I have any of it up here. Um, but it's one of the <clears throat> Citadel's uh, crackle paints, whichever one it is. So that's going to be a fairly light brown. So we can get away with a fairly dark. Painting in the shadows sounds like a goth band. You know what? Painting in the shadows sounds like a great name for a podcast. Anyone out there, that's free. Like You can use that. Or, more likely, Google it because someone's already... Painting in the Shadows podcast, it probably already exists. If it doesn't, why, why, why doesn't it? Matching boots and hats in black. Actually, that's a good point. We need to we need to choose the hat color as well. I might I might go for a lighter hat color actually, because both of the models I've done so far have black hats. Um, I kind of like the idea of some variety. Right. New black on the wet palette, which actually just happens to be the same black paint as I used to base coat the base. Where does the where do the jeans end and where does the boots begin? I'm I'm deciding that that is <laughs> because of the way I've done the base. Um, I think I have mentioned this before. Painting in the Shadows is a book by Catherine Kovisik. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. A novel called Pain. Yeah. So, Gargog and Foximet's got that. Thank you for looking that up. Right, so Painting in the Shadows is not necessarily a good name for your podcast. It, it's kind of, it's already a thing. That really does look weird with the uh, the boots just disappearing into the ground. Um, one of the things that uh, I did with these is, because these models come on pudding bases, I made a silicon mold for a normal 25 round base, poured the resin in and then put the, the pudding base into the resin. <clears throat> and if you put too much resin in, you end up with the resin seeping up the sides of the boots, which is what's happened here. Because the surface tension and resin, uh, they do like to ruin your hard work. I'm just going to grab some some of the uh, ochre and just give this a quick glaze of at least some colour. We'll see when I put the crackle paste on what that looks like. It's probably just going to look like he's dumped his feet in the uh, 
in the, in the sand and is disappearing. That's it's, pretty, it's not it's not a big deal. Um, the opposite problem, which I actually have an example of here, because one of the other cowboys in the set. This one. If you don't put enough resin in, and this is like right on the limit of, of almost being broken, uh, of, of almost not working, but the there's only a very thin layer of resin in here, and then you can still see quite clearly the outline of the pudding base. So what I'm tempted to do here is to get some acetone, clean off all of this around this ring, ring and then do another resin pour in there just to bring it up to the to the level it should be or at least kind of fill in this kind of little moat he, he has a personalized moat which is fine but it's not necessarily the desert look uh, that we're going for there's also a hole in it there so I'd need to plug that as well but that's not uh, the model we're doing today this is ah yeah hats so the other two models I painted both have black hats. They've got black hats, so I want to paint a different color hat. We've got dark brown and we've got ochre fairly high up on the model. So we can try and fit in the middle with some medium brown. Which probably going to be the best idea. Or we can go for a... We've got green on the waistcoat. Do we want to repeat green on the on the cap on the hat? I think medium brown would probably be the uh, the one that fits. Let's go for that. Shaking paint. Good music. Goggle, Gog Uncle Nerf says that something would perturb him, but uh, I'm not actually sure which which bit. <laughs> Was it the, the disappearing feet? Because, yeah, that's... That, the, that, that technique of, of um, putting a pudding base in a, uh, a resin base, it's not without its, its flaws, not without its dangers, but I, I like the effect when it works. And so I'm willing to uh, to kind of to tr to try it out. And to be fair, as far as I'm aware, I'm the only one who's actually done it. I mean, I'm sure it's not a new idea, but I haven't seen anyone else. Uh, the uneven base would ah yes that also um, that's one that I'm gonna gonna go and fix just by adding kind of cleaning up with some some acetone to, to get rid of the paint that's on it and then doing just another little bit of resin over the top uh, that's easier to fix because adding more resin um, isn't too hard. But in the, in this situation where the feet are disappearing into the the base, that is much harder to uh, to deal with. I would guess that if you had a metal model, you might be able to separate the resin from the me from the metal. But with a plastic model like this, I don't know how that would how that would be possible short of essentially carving <laughs> carving it out with uh, a great amount of time and patience
How's that looking for color choices? I think we're looking good. A few more details. Need to do the skin. We've got a belt, ammo belt. We've got a little stripe around the hat. We've got the chain. Actually, the chain's an easy one to do because I'll just paint that with uh, with metallics. So if I grab, starting with some ochre, because I've got a really nice uh, rose gold paint. Uh, but it doesn't cover particularly well. And so having a a brown or a tan or a white, depending on what look you want to go for, having something underneath it that's going to support the color is helpful. That'll take a bit to dry. So while that's drying, we can fill in some of the other bits. Let's get the ammo belt. silver had fallen over so I've lost it. Even though this is in a Ravel pot, this is not a Ravel paint. This is actually just a craft paint uh, from Poundland I think. But a really nice colour. Sort of has to go on straight from the pot. Thinning it down just makes it a disaster. just to bring out some of the recesses, some of the shape of it. And also some green underneath because I spilled over a little. Yeah, there we go. And some silver. the belt has a buckle and if I'm going to try hard I'm going to paint the belt buckle Go for a black uh, stripe around the hat. I think that's gonna be okay. I don't want too much, too too many dark colours on these, but this one's turned out relatively bright. It's kind of just the just the jacket that's a darker colour.
How's that? Yeah, that works. That works for color. What did I say I was going to do? I said that a minute ago. Oh yeah, black wash for the metallics. That's the wrong one. brush with uh, all of the surfactants that go into the wash. Nice finely detailed. Right, that's the wrong one. That can go off. To make sure I don't mix them up. When you've got a nice finely detailed surface for a metallic, just a uh, simple base coat of the metallic and then a black wash really does look nice for the amount of effort that's gone in. I mean, there are better ways, of course, but. Just that. Looks pretty good. I don't know why I'm being so careful about the uh, the hands, because I haven't painted the hands yet. I want it to be as messy as I want. that'll nicely separate out in each of the links. Cool, and that's most of this model done. Uh, we've got half an hour left or maybe less I don't have to run for a full two hours my live stream I can run for as long as I want but what I will do now is just leave this for a minute just so that the wash can have a hope of drying before I go to the skin which is very close to that metallic Ah, Grip, grips of the pistols are visible. Let's get why are you not playing?
just neating, neatening, neat, neatening up some of the bits. Not that I can say it, but just the odd bit here or there where the wrong color of paint has overstepped its mark. But I think we're safe now to go for some skin tone. And this model will be a Caucasian skin tone. And we have that uh, ochre down as base coat. And then we're going to mix in a Caucasian skin and go a few layers of highlights, which should give us the right effect in the end. But I'm just going to quickly splash in some more water on the wet palette because it's to dry out while I'm working. <laughs> I'm just noticing the, uh, the fingers of this hand. If I can get it to focus. Um, clearly, whoever sculpted the hand of this model, and possibly all of the others, yeah, probably all of the others, um, probably hasn't held a revolver before because the finger placement is not quite uh, not quite right Why does my music keep stopping? Ah. It was set to play one and then stop. But we've had music most of the stream, so why has it suddenly changed?
continue to think that maybe the uh, maybe the ochre isn't quite dark enough to paint up with this uh, this Caucasian. There's not enough contrast. And I did specifically say to myself, oh, this, this face is really hard to get to behind the hat and behind the mask. So what I should probably do when I paint this one is paint the skin first before I paint the hat and the mask. And as you all well know, because you've been watching me do it, I have not done that. doesn't help that my skin tone is drying into my paintbrush. There, on that hand, can you see the difference between the fingers? Only just about barely. I may have to come in with something a little darker. And what the really? Really? Thanks, brush. have to uh, stop soon because I'm going to have to go off and clean my brush. Let's see if I can push through because we are so close to the end of this model. Only realistically the only bits left on this model are the annoying going back and forth over and over again painting the same things a thousand times to try and get it as good as I can get it, but I'm not doing that on stream because that's that's dull. Yeah, the uh, that shadow color definitely definitely helped. You can now see that there are multiple fingers rather than just a single lump of a hand. to the brush and the model essentially being done um, I would like to come back for the eyes but there is no way that I'm doing that without cleaning this brush first because there is that paint dried up quick I'm not sure if you can see any of the flecks up here 
Oh wait, there's one. Right there, at the end of that, that bristle there. Yeah, this brush is gonna need a proper clean. That's okay. Brushes need cleaning every now and again. I wonder if it's just like that just that paint is drying quicker than others. I have mentioned previously that a lot of stuff is drying faster than it normally would recently. Um, I suspect that it's an issue of um, it being winter and central heating being on it is drying out the air. That's the best theory we have so far. So, if we call the stream done in a few minutes' time, I'll leave you all for. Um, I'll give you two minutes to answer any questions in the chat about this model, about any other model in the set, or about anything else that I'm getting up to. Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to ask those questions because I know there's a delay. Uh, and then I'll end the stream. But this one. I think, uh, I think this one's looking pretty good next to all the others. Let me uh, let me pull it off the painting handle. I definitely like having a lot of blue in this set. Uh, I think blue will feature on every model. I might have to use some more of the ochre instead of the tan on some other models. That works too. Ooh. When is the next episode of Back to the Brush? Love the bandana. We'll be doing more freehand painting in the future. So the next episode of Back to the Brush, as I did mention earlier, and you weren't paying attention, obviously, um, the next, um, the November episode is pseudo lost. We think it's recoverable, but we are not going to get access to that anytime immediately soon. So we have recorded a an interim episode, which will be coming out this Wednesday, so two days time. Then the. Um, what was the November episode will be our February episode probably and then hopefully after that we'll be back to recording normally and will I be doing more freehanding in the future? Absolutely. I think freehanding is a technique that a lot of people are afraid of and I kind of want to dispel that because starting freehanding with some basic like simple freehand is really easy and is something that anyone who paints models can probably get started with pretty pretty much straight away um, getting to this kind of detail takes a bit of practice but I don't do a lot of freehand and I managed to do well I'm not particularly happy with it but it's over the folds of that that bandana so it's quite a difficult one to do um, but I am going to be looking into the steps of learning and getting better at freehand and uh, and kind of documenting that so that other people can follow along and hopefully end up with people doing better than me. So yes, absolutely more freehand coming. Grandpa Wolf says thank you very much for today's stream. See you next time. Looking good, cowpokes. Thank you. Next stream going to be cowboys or something else? I think uh, two in a row is probably the limit on any particular subject. Um, I do want to get these done for competition. Um, and so there might be not next time, but the time after might be Cowboys again. Um, but the next stream will certainly be something different because I like to I like to break things up. Um, I've got some Orcs, I've got some Imperial Guard, I've got some Frostgrave stuff, I've got some Dwarves, uh, and I've got some of my Soviet army as well to paint. So there's plenty of options for different things. Um, I will decide next week. And Hyo's World, Hyo's Hi World, hello. Unfortunately, you've joined right at the end of the stream, um, but thank you for coming past. Uh, hopefully you can watch it back uh, in a few moments when it becomes a video or a VOD. But thank you to Gargunkle Nerf, thank you to Grandpa Werewolf, Foxy Mitz, Heroes World, uh, 40k Guy, was there another one? I think there was another one somewhere. Uh, Nicholas as well, 
who's probably disappeared. And thank you to everyone for watching along. I'm Edgar. I always will be. And I shall see you shortly on Wednesday for Back to the Brush and on Monday next week for another painting live stream. So, end stream. Thank you very much and goodbye.